This video is sponsored by bootcamp.com. Check it out for INBDE prep and use coupon code MENTALDENTAL for 10% off. Hey everyone, Dr. Ryan here and welcome back to our dental anatomy series. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the mandibular first premolar. So here we have a picture from the facial view of the permanent mandibular first premolar, which happens to be the smallest of all the premolars. Using the universal tooth numbering system, this would include tooth number 21 and 28. Now mandibular premolars are generally more circular than the oval-shaped maxillary premolars. And that's because the mesiodistal dimension, unlike the maxillary premolars, is somewhat close to the facio-lingual dimension, making it, again, look a little bit more round or circular as opposed to oval. So there's not much to say about this tooth from the facial view, which isn't a bad thing when we're studying, but the crown has this kind of characteristic upside down bell shape, or we could just say a pentagon shape. And I'll just reiterate that this is the smallest of all the premolars. It almost looks like the mandibular canine if it were squished down to be a lot shorter. One of the most defining features of this tooth is seen in the lingual view, and that's the mesiolingual developmental groove, which is right here. It occurs at the mesiolingual line angle, and we're going to talk about it again when we get to the occlusal aspect but it's the only thing I want you to remember for the lingual aspect. So definitely don't forget that for the mandibular first premolar. Now for the mesial aspect, we're going to start talking about the general crown shape. Now remember all maxillary posterior teeth share this fact that from the side view, they are trapezoidal. So the narrow side toward the occlusal. All mandibular posterior teeth from the side view are rhomboid, so a rhombus or a parallelogram as viewed from the side view, and it's skewed toward the lingual. Now because of this skew, the buccal cusp is centered over the root apex. And the lingual cusp is centered more over the CEJ out here. Another distinguishing characteristic of this tooth compared to the other premolars is the lingual cusp is a lot shorter. It's a lot less developed than its facial counterpart. The lingual cusp is approximately two thirds the height of the facial cusp. It's almost like the cingulum of a canine. And this is the biggest discrepancy in cusp heights of all the teeth in the mouth. Now for the distal aspect, we see the flatter root flute, the flatter cervical line, the shorter marginal ridge, all the usual things that we talk about from the distal aspect. Also, I just wanna point out that the facial cusp curves back a whole lot. And we saw this in the mesial aspect as well, but it's almost like the shark arc that we saw in the mandibular canine. And that's maybe not surprising because these two teeth are right next to each other. We're gonna spend more time on the occlusal aspect as we tend to do with these posterior teeth because there's a lot more interesting stuff going on there. Now this is the only premolar that has this uniquely prominent transverse ridge where those two triangular ridges basically collide with each other at the middle of the tooth and this results in two very separate mesial and distal pits that are sometimes referred to as snake eyes, hence the cute cartoon down here. I also want to draw your attention back to the mesiolingual developmental groove, but this time from the occlusal view. The very round, sometimes referred to as a diamond-shaped tooth, has this little cutout where the groove is sitting at that mesiolingual line angle and we sometimes refer to it as a bite out of a cookie, like someone took a bite out of this tooth. And so the cookie bite, mesiolingual developmental groove, is yet another defining feature of this tooth. 
This slide is really interesting. So most of the time, this is very simple, and the tooth follows the general rule that the amount of cusps equals the amount of pulp horns. Well, we do have two cusps here, right? Facial and lingual. So that means we usually have two pulp horns, and that's true to a degree. But that lingual cusp can sometimes be a little too small, and then we only end up with just one pulp horn. So that makes it the only posterior tooth in the entire mouth that can occasionally have just one pulp horn, as opposed to the amount that you would expect based on the amount of cusps that tooth has. And again, that's just if the lingual cusp is a little too short. Now, 75% of these teeth have one canal and 25% have two pulp canals, usually broken into a facial and lingual pulp canal. This percentage might look a little familiar because it's the exact same percentage we saw with the maxillary second premolar. Even though the crown is very circular, again, it can be described as a diamond shape, the cross section is an oval as the root tapers in mesially and distally. Spoiler alert here, both mandibular premolars will look very similar in their cross sections. So a summary for the mandibular first premolar, the occluso cervical dimension is slightly greater than the facial lingual dimension, which is slightly greater than the mesiodistal dimension. To be honest, all three of these dimensions are very, very close to each other. They're practically equal with just slight variations. We have the snake eyes and cookie bite phenomena. I just want to include those fun words to help you remember those facts of the tooth. If we're focusing more on the technical terminology, this will hopefully help you remember the transverse ridge. This will hopefully help you remember the mesiolingual developmental groove. It has a pentagon shape from the facial view, rhombus shape from the side view, a diamond shape from the occlusal view. It's oval in cross section, and it primarily consists of four lobes, one or two pulp horns, and one pulp canal. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to this channel for much more on dentistry. If you'd like to support me, please check out my Patreon page. And thank you to all of my patrons for their support. You can unlock access to my video slides to take notes on and practice questions for the board exams. So go check that out. The link is in the description. Thanks again for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video.